हेलो चैम्पियंस आई एम डॉक्टर मोनिका द लिविंग वर्ल्ड इंक्लूड्स द होल वेराइटी ऑफ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ अर्थ एंड द होल ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ऑन विच द लाइफ दैट इज एग्जिस्टिंग नॉ द होल ऑफ द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स विच वी फाइंड ऑन द अर्थ दे आर सो 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 डाइवर्स एंड दस इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द ह्यूमन्स who are such creatures which are very curious and inquisitive to know whole of the things which are happening or whatsoever is present around them and one such way is to classify the organisms which are existing on the surface of earth the branch of biology called taxonomy is the one which is based on this it involves the classification of living organisms based on their similarities and differences thus taxonomy i can say it is a branch which indicates the relationship among the different living organisms as well as the classification based on the groups which are either alike or different in one way or the other now if i talk about the living organisms on the surface of earth there are around 8.7 million species and just 2 million species they have been described up till now by the scientists to be more precise 86% of the terrestrial species they are yet to be described and 91% of the marine species are yet to be known by the scientists and it was in the year 2016 that 18000 species of plants and animals they were described so that means approximately 493 species per day so that is a lot a number in a day 493 species per day and the taxonomy this branch that is based on the classification system and in 1753 a swedish biologist called as carlus linnaeus was the first one to develop a universal classification system which is still being used by the scientists and this classification system it is a hierarchical system which is like a nested boxes and the biggest box that is called as the domain rest all the boxes or rest all the classifications systems they are beneath these domains and if i talk about the domain there are three domains so all the living organisms on the earth they are just divided into these three domains now what are these these are bacteria archaea and eukarya now bacteria and archaea earlier they were included in the one kingdom that was kingdom monera but later on they both were found to be different and it was found by the scientists that archaea was more closer to the eukarya rather than the bacteria now bacteria and archaea both of them that includes the single celled unicellular organisms whose dna that is lying freely in the cytoplasm whereas the eukarya that includes all the multicellular organisms whose genetic material that lies within the nucleus of the cells now eukarya that is further divided into four kingdoms kingdom protista kingdom fungi kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia so four kingdoms that includes rest all the multicellular organisms on the surface of earth if i say now it was in around uh, 2001 a uh, one news that was published in the geographic channel and that news was regarding the third species of elephants so this just indicates that the classification system or taxonomy is the branch which is still an ongoing process and the whole classification system that is full of suspicions and it is full of surprises so it was recognized earlier that there are just two species of elephants one is asian elephant and another is african savanna elephant but later on it was found that there was a third variety of elephant which was african forest elephant this african forest elephant earlier it was regarded as a subspecies of the 
African elephant. But later on, the scientists found certain different features in this African forest elephant. As for example, the males of this African forest elephant, they were smaller than the African savanna. And second thing, the ivory found for both of these elephants, that was also different. The ivory material of the African forest savanna that was more pinker and it was more harder than the African forest elephant. So this was a matter of research for the scientists and there were a lot of uh, confusions which were going around within the scientists whether it is to be considered as a separate species or not. So they thought that if both the species of the African elephants they are capable of interbreeding that means they are not different species. But finally with the help of DNA studies it was found that African savanna and the African forest elephant both they were far away from each other in terms of their features and they were less closely related as for lions and tigers or horses and zebras if we say. So we can see that there is this lot of diversity is very curative branch and it helps the scientists to find out, find out day now and then to, knew, to know about the various species which are still undiscovered and there might be certain species which might have become extinct and still they are not discovered yet. Thank you.